is Rose Speaker. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing really well. Uh, I decided tonight I'd do a cook supper with me. Um, lately I haven't done any videos because by the time I decide what I want to eat, it's like I'm too tired to film. But uh, I've been waking up really, really early in the morning. And uh, but tonight I'm really hungry for. I never made an actual dirty rice, and uh, there's a mix you use. And I'm gonna make that, and I got bought some fresh uh, smoked sausage from our local Market Basket, if any of you are familiar with that store. But uh, anyway, I missed you guys, and uh, I thought this would be the perfect day. We're supposed to be like having really bad weather right now, but actually the sky's turning blue. It's crazy, the weather. Anyway, uh, Ella's with me tonight, and uh, we would grill something, but with the weather we can't. But I'm kind of here for like a a barbecue meal but i'm just gonna barbecue the sausage like slices anyway it's gonna be good and I, uh, i'm gonna show you how i'm gonna make it all of oil heating up i actually just made a mess so this is really hot because i had the stove on i like to start with my no most people use the the trinity instead of the bell pepper i use uh, a jalapeno and uh, i've never made uh, rice dressing with a little pork on camera before so and I've never used I'll show you what I'm talking about and this is my dad's secret and my dad makes the best actually he learned it from my mom but uh it's uh this it's called and if you it's it's a dressing mix and it's actually made and I know some people might get grossed out but it's actually made with a little chicken liver and it's really delicious and the pork also gives it a little bit more flavor and i'll and actually this is a leftover from the recipe ella and i did the other day it's a little bit of pork and not much just a tiny bit and then beef and then i had to take some out of the freezer because i like it meaty so this is probably about a little over a pound so um i'm going to cook with that and then i'm going to i don't know how much of the dressing mix i'm going to add i have not actually cooked with this dressing mix and probably I don't know how many years because my husband gets grossed out by the mix so I don't use it but he's not here so I said Ella do you like Popo's uh, rice dressing we, I call it rice dressing but I'm sorry it's like dirty rice but I call it rice dressing I don't know why that's just what I always called it and uh, she said yeah so I, we ran to the store and got this mix and uh i'm ex so excited because I've, I've been wanting to learn how to, the only thing i don't have is he also uses a uh i think heinz makes it and it's like a savory brown gravy mix or not a mix it's actually a gravy and uh, i don't have that so i took a little beef stock and i had a, just a little bit of cornstarch in it because i like it i'm just gonna make my own gravy i like it i like it a little i don't know if you call it juicy or whatever <laughs> but uh anyway and the other thing i'm gonna make you guys know if you've been watching for a while i always use reshort smoked sausage pork and beef the hot one today i decided this store has the best boudin i should have bought some and showed you guys and sausage this is pork and beef uh jalapeno sausage and you can actually let me hold it up close see the jalapenos in here so hope it's not and i'm cooking with little onions and since i can't actually have a barbecue meal i'm going to put a little barbecue sauce on here you could put this in beans you could use eat it with mustard you could eat it with rice you could eat it in on a, on a bun any kind of way you want but uh in the rice i was gonna do it in the instant pot but when i decided that i was going to use the dressing mix i don't remember how much liquid is in there so i decided just to put my rice in advance and this is hot but this is two cups of medium green rice so it shouldn't take long i'm going to try to do two things at once i'm going to turn this one up far on and i'm just going to what i want to do is kind of brown the sausage a little bit in the onions and then i'm going to mix a little bit of this this is really good on a like a on a hot dog bun if you had a, a link of sausage but it's good like this and i'm going to mix a little bit of I have a little bit of this left over that I need to use. And we're just gonna eat it like this tonight. So it's like a real spicy Cajun dinner. 
but uh, we've been craving it. We, I have some chicken breast, so I'm doing that. Um, actually, we have leftover fried chicken tenders that I did in videos the other day. And uh, we might just pop those in the air fryer and eat those with this too. Um, those were those were really good. I need a video of those because I filmed this and it is good. And I, you can do it in the air fryer too, but I haven't tried it yet. And it's and I'm sure you can buy this at a lot of places. And they even have a, one that says Southern style. So I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic in both recipes. This is a garlic, you know, I always chop the garlic in advance, put it in a jar. And we like a lot of garlic. And uh, I don't remember how much salt is in the dressing mix either. So I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt to my onions. I'll tell you, those, those onions just suck up that olive oil. But you don't have to cook them all the way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my meat. And I have this fire on. Elle's gonna have to help me cook this one. Just gonna pour my meat in here. I didn't think I liked, uh, I don't like pork a lot, but actually I, I like ground pork. Not too much of it, just a little bit. And I'm, But I'll tell you what, I do love Jimmy Dean sausage, and that's pork sausage. That's also good in uh, rice dressing, if you use that. That gives a really good flavor as well. So let me ground this up a little bit. And uh, I'm probably gonna season it with well, I'll just do it right now. A little black pepper. You know our normal seasoning food. And I'm going to put green onions at the end, which I am growing myself. I'm growing some herbs. Maybe I'll show you one day. Not much, just a little bit. Just a little olive oil in the other pot. I'm going to put this one. I tend to like the... the uh, Pork and beef sauce is the best. If I wanted to do this really fast, I could put it on the other burner. I think I'm like, this, it's kind of too big for the stove. Just put a little, the regular like onion powder, garlic powder. You put your favorite seasonings. And I'm gonna probably add a little bit of Cajun seasoning as well. This is my favorite. It's not as salty, but it's a little spicy. And I think I'm just gonna, cause you know rice, you have to kind of over season your meat because you're gonna add the rice and the rice will be just barely salted. So you want to keep that in mind. And also my beef stock is salted, so I've got to be careful. So let me bring on this, get started on the other one. And I'm sorry if I sound like I'm in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry lately. and. I want to make a dessert. I don't know if we'll be able to film that tonight, but I filmed this recipe for these peanut butter and jelly bars, and they are so good. And they have oatmeal in them, so I, I call them healthy. I'm not gonna, you could actually cook this and just add the rice, and that's dirty rice as well. Uh-oh. I'm not going to use all of it. I just want a little bit of the flavor. Now, my dad uses the whole thing. I tried to defrost it. It was fro You buy it frozen. But you have to cook it. And my, this pot is on high and it is burning in my hand. I need a mess. I'm just gonna have to take, clean this up after I'm done. I'm making a mess. And I think that's all I'm gonna put. I can taste it and see, but you can see there's some fat in there. Let me see if I can smell it. I might have to put more. I love this part. It browns well, it cooks quickly. And you can see there's a little bit of liquid already, just from the pork and the beef. I'm gonna actually probably cook the liquid out and let it brown a little bit. You don't have to do that. I'm probably gonna get a, another spoon to scoop a little bit more of this out. I don't think I put enough. Now, you can 
had the whole thing with all this. If I was more experienced with it, I probably would add the whole thing. But I just want a little bit of the flavor, a little bit of the ground pork. I have a, uh, what I'm going to do is, I like to break this up. Cook this on high a little while, see if I can get a little brown on the meat. And then this is, let me show you what the sausage is doing over here, really quickly. And it smells good. You can eat it just like that, probably with a little stock with rice. I love browning it for me, and it's going to be so good. I hope it's not too spicy. Anyway, we were too lazy to make chicken, so we're just going to cook sausage. I can get close up to this pot. See, I wanted this normal burning brown at the bottom, so I'm going to be glazed with a little beef stock. I'm turn it down a little bit, too. Now, it's not fun cleaning this pot, I can tell you. I probably just have a bigger spoon. I mean, I don't have a recipe exact measurements because, like I said, I haven't made this in a long time. <laughs> but I do know that I'll, I like a meaty one. And I usually make two cups of rice to about one and a quarter pounds of meat. That's usually what I go by. So I'm gonna turn it really low. Oh, I'm this side gets really hot right here. I get that off. But that's flavor when you when you let it build that fawn at the bottom. It just takes a little patience. And a very hot, hot, see how it's clean at the bottom? I forgot to take you off the close-up. I hope you don't mind. Have they been in close-up the whole time? They were. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, they get to see the pot, huh? I didn't use all the beef stuff. That sausage is pretty good. Got a, it's perfection. What? It's perfection. Oh, Put the sausage in a, a bowl or something. Do you want me to like take not not pour it in, but take the sausage out? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Let me eat this first, and then I'll put it. I think that'd be good on a sandwich, like a fold over. Should I taste it on camera? Do I have mm -hmm. to do it now and end it? No, you don't have to do it now. Yeah, on top for the picture. To be honest with you, I like it a little bit more hot sauce on it, and I could have used the whole container. And I also, Kitchen Basics is my favorite beef stock. It's, it was hot. But the pork... Just gives it that little bit of extra flavor and and uh, makes it a little moister. I hate the word. <laughs> but, uh, and also that dressing mix is really good. This is a true Cajun dirty rice, in my opinion. That's all I'm gonna call it. But I hope you like the recipe, I hope you try it. And you don't have to have that mix to make delicious meat and rice like this. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, Hopefully, I'll make a video pretty soon. And uh, subscribe if you haven't, if you want to. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Bye. why it's cutting out sometimes and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to talk louder i do talk low sometimes and but to be honest with you i mumble so much you probably won't be able to understand me anyway i should put uh subtitles on my videos but i don't know how to do that yet anyway today i know uh i feel good right now so I'm, i try to take advantage of it when i do and make more videos for you guys and and for me because it's so much fun this is my new favorite dessert it's uh peanut butter and jelly bars but it's got oatmeal in it, and uh, and I need the fiber. I know that's a little too much information, but and I like sugar, so and peanut butter. It's it's so good, and it's all about the jam you choose, which my new favorite is 
it's the uh, Welch's and it's natural strawberry jam. Actually, I'm going to show it to you. It's very easy. And I always measure out my ingredients before I start. I know some people like to watch people do that. I feel like I talk so much that I better get everything done in advance. But my oven's preheating to, uh, I told them to use convection at 335 and I might burn it, but because we want to we wanna make something else after this and it's getting late. We, we're just in the cooking mood today. Anyway, I'll double this recipe. I'll put probably the original recipe and I feel so bad because, well, I've altered the recipe, but I don't, I forgot where it came from, but my husband helped me print it and we only printed the ingredients and I, forget, I always write the name of where I got it from and I totally forgot this time. So I apologize to whoever uh, made these bars, but I did change them and make them my way. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the recipe and uh, I'm gonna do it on my mixer. It's gonna be quick and easy and delicious. So let's get started. I put my mixer on the stove because it's better lighting. So I'll just show you the ingredients as I go because usually I like to, when I cook something on the stove, I put all my ingredients out so you guys can see them. But anyway, this is the, let me see if I can back it up. This is the recipe and I changed uh, Instead of just brown sugar, I put regular sugar and brown sugar, and it calls for quick cooking oats and a half a cup of old fashioned oats. I only use quick cooking oats. So this is this will be doubled, and I'm gonna use a nine by 13, one of the disposable pans actually, because uh, I'm just lazy today, I guess. I wanna put it in that pan. Anyway, uh, maybe if I could hold this up, I, somebody could screenshot it. But uh, I didn't write down all the things that I do, but it calls for a lot of jam. And this, you can use Smucker's, Welch's, or your favorite jam, or a homemade one would be even better. But this is a, it's the natural strawberry spread, and it has no high fructose corn syrup, which does not bother me if I eat a little bit of corn syrup. But in this case, I guess it's kind of good that I don't uh, use it, because we're only gonna use, we're gonna use all this, but two ounces. So I already put my butter in here and uh, I have one stick of salted butter and one stick of unsalted butter. That's just what was in my fridge and it's at room temperature. So first, I'm gonna wear my glasses so I can read the recipe as we go. Um, but if you did not double this recipe, you would bake it in an eight by eight pan, which is too small for me. And I also share these with my parent, with my dad and my brother. So this is a cup of butter. And I like to use real butter. Um, I've, I'm pretty strict about that rule. That's all that's in my refrigerator. And a cup of peanut butter. And I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to uh, just estimate what I think a cup is because I, I really honestly, I don't wanna clean peanut butter out of a measuring cup. I know that's bad, but you know, this is not like a cake, so it doesn't have to be exact. Oh, and this is my favorite peanut butter. You could probably use crunchy peanut butter if you want. There's so many things you could do. You could put chocolate. Actually, last time I made it, my husband wanted some chocolate. So I made a, one side with chocolate chips and I made one side with strawberry jam. And uh, he liked them, but I, I like, I, I just been craving peanut butter and jelly lately. And I'll tell you why. Because Ella, for breakfast, has been wanting a peanut butter and jelly sandwich every morning. And I'm, every time I make it, well, I make it for her. I don't hope she doesn't get embarrassed. I make it for her, and uh, so it makes me crave peanut butter every single day. That might be, that's close enough. Come on. Oh, I'm going to flick it on myself. I'll put my apron on. Anyway, that's good. So we're going to start mixing this. If you hear that noise, it's my oven. Very easy. When your butter's at room temperature. I'm just gonna scrape it down a little bit. And I apologize, my mixer's pretty loud, but that's okay. It's a good mixer. I've really enjoyed this mixer. Um, I didn't have one for years, but this, oh, this is a cup of uh, packed brown, light brown sugar and a cup of granulated sugar. And I'm just gonna throw it in here. I 
It's a lot of sugar, but it's a lot of bars. And it's, so let me cream this and then we'll move on to the next step. And that way you don't have to hear the mixture, but I'll show you how creamy I get it. You don't have to get it like light and fluffy and all that. Cause it's, you know, it's not a cake thing. It's not gonna rise or anything. I know I almost messed up because I, I just realized that I only used one egg and I was supposed to use two. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our eggs. These are room temperature large eggs. You know, I, I, I have a goal to bake almost every day. Uh, not every day, but I'll take out my butter and my eggs just in case I want to bake something. And I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla, vanilla, pure vanilla extract, one teaspoon. This might be a little bit extra, but I love it. Sometimes I use vanilla bean paste and sometimes, sometimes I use just vanilla extract, but I always make sure I use real vanilla extract. I find there's a huge difference, but please don't be offended if I'm a vanilla extract snob. So let's mix this up. See how you want it to look really creamy, you want it mixed in really, really well. That looks good. I could eat this. I, this year for Christmas, I don't know how many batches of peanut butter fudge I made until I got the right one. Now we need, okay, now I did, I, I made a mistake. I, I, I like to, let me move the camera back. I, I usually put my baking soda and my salt separate and then mix it with you guys, but I threw it all in the bowl. And I'll show you, uh, this is, you can use all-purpose flour. This is a, this is a very good flour. But any, any flour will do all-purpose. And I use, if you want to use old-fashioned oats, you can. But I, I just have these Kroger Quick Minute Oats. So basically, I doubled it. So I have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And I uh, fluff it up. And then I, I uh, scoop it and I level it off with a knife and then I have three cups of uh, oatmeal oats and I have one teaspoon of baking soda and almost a teaspoon of ba uh, baking baking salt just salt because I used I used one salted butter so I'm just gonna dump this in here that's the only thing about these bowls sometimes I have to use my spatula. And the mixer, you could use a hand mixer too for this. You could even probably do do it by hand. It's quite a big. I feel like I'm forgetting something. All right, let's mix this up. It's gonna be pretty thick. Oh, you can even see. These are so good though, I'm telling you. Want to make sure it's mixed up really well and that is it for this so let me get situated and uh we'll start we're gonna put three four seven at the bottom of the pan and then the jam and then top it with the uh crumbs kind of uh, one of these pans underneath one of these because i find that once they get heavy they, they get a little harder to take in and out of the oven so i'm just going to take and this is not the fun part to me at all. You just got to estimate three-fourths of the uh, mixture and just kind of dump it out and spread it out. You know, honestly, you could bake this as a cookie and probably be really, really good. I also have another recipe, and y'all let me know if you want me to, to make it. It's homemade, you know, like those little Debbie oatmeal pies. Oh my gosh, I was addicted to those for a while. And I, the cookies were so good, I just didn't make the filling. These are pretty thick. And it says you don't have to grease the pan, but I, I did anyway. 
I should have picked a prettier pen because it's not going to be a, that pretty of a picture. But I have uh, some fresh mint outside. I really need to use. It's still pretty. I have thyme. I have a. Uh, it's called German thyme, and I have Italian oregano, mint. It's just plain. Uh, I, I wish I could have gotten another mint. And I don't. What else am I missing, Ella? What else do I have? Mint, thyme, oregano. Oh, and I have the cutest little cherry tomato plant. And, it's, and my husband has a big tomato plant. I hope all this. I don't know if you guys have heard about the rain on the news. Flood, uh, flooded Lake Charles and some other areas. I don't really watch the news. And that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> right, Ella? So I'm just going to guess. That's about... I, see, that's about how much I'm going to save. And you just press it as evenly as you can. And you can even wet your hands and press it or put flour on your hands. I'm trying to talk a little bit louder. So you guys let me know if it's too loud or if it's still low in volume or whatever I can do to improve it. Because I, I, I really, I know you, you guys need to hear. I always make it uneven. I'm trying to push some in this corner right here. Okay. It's heavy. I'm gonna put just a tiny piece right there. Okay. Now we're gonna take a lot of strawberry. Oh, and use your, I used to make my own strawberry jam. And it was called vanilla bean strawberry jam. And it, and, uh, it was so good. This was a few years back. I even made a video on it. It's one of my old, old videos. And uh, I was the only one that liked it. And then I found this nap, and then now Ella loves strawberry jam. But we found this Welch's, and I'll tell you what, it's pretty good. And it's smooth, it's a, one of the fruit spreads. We're gonna use almost this whole jar. I'm just gonna, it's room temperature, so it's gonna spread easily. But you could put some chocolate in here. Just, I mean, whatever, raisins. But these are just peanut butter and jelly bars. I've seen some that use pie crust. And you could always only use the amount of jam you want, you know, to cut back on the sugar. You could use a low sugar jam. I guess I, I never thought about that. But of course, we're not going to eat the whole pan. Well, I might. <laughs> not in one day, though. I think kids sometimes prefer store-bought junk than homemade junk. Ella's kind of picky about things, but she does like these. You can even do half grape, half strawberry, but we both love the strawberry, so. And I'm supposed to, I owe my dad, my dad found a recipe in the newspaper for a chocolate pound cake and he's waiting on me to make that for him. I don't know if it, it doesn't, I don't know if it's the best recipe. It calls for milk chocolate, so I think it's gonna be good. That's my favorite chocolate to use. But I wasn't sure if I should video that because I just made a triple chocolate mud cake not too long ago. And you just wanna spread it. That looks about, like about, let's see. Looks about right. And then I'm just gonna take <clears throat> these and I'm just going to use my hand. My hands are clean. And you just kind of just crumble it over the top. I think I should, I'm pretty sure. I made these a few times, so. And you can save uh, more if you want more topping and not as much at the bottom. It's, you know, I like recipes like this because you can, it's hard to mess up. But you can't overcook it easily. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it. Oh, 
on the back of that bag of flour that I showed you guys, there's a biscuit recipe that I've not tried yet. I think I might video that biscuit recipe. The reason I have not tried it is because I'm so partial to uh, recipes with buttermilk and this one calls for just milk. So anyway, I'm gonna finish doing this and then I'll be right back. Talk about heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven and it says 25 to 30, 30 minutes, but I think it took me longer last time. Um, if you want to do a bigger pan and make them thinner, I think that would be delicious too. And faster. My oven door is so loud. I'm gonna, I might have to cover them with aluminum foil if the, the top browns too quickly. But I'm gonna set my timer for, uh, I'm doing convection. If you're doing a regular oven, just do three, 350. I'm gonna set my timer for 25 minutes. <laughs> Convection does cook a little bit faster. I really like it, but you have to be careful what you cook under convection. So I'll show you what it looks like and when it comes out. And it's good hot too. You're supposed to wait for it to cool off, but it's really good hot. So I'm on my min. I think I got the wrong kind. It's kind of big, but it, it's a. Uh, I'll just put in some water. But oh, it smells so good. If I drink tea, I would put it in tea, but I don't really drink tea. I don't know if it's gonna go with peanut butter and jelly bars, but they're almost cooked. I, I ended up cooking them about, because my bottom was a little bit thick. I might've overcooked them a little bit, but I'm not sure, but about 35 minutes. So I'm about to take them out and uh, you'll get to see what they look like. They're, and you can smell them, they smell so good. So the aluminum foil over so it wouldn't get too brown at the top, but this is what they look like. And then you can see how the strawberry jam bubbles above on the crust. And to be honest with you, the only way that I know to see if they're cooked is just take a spoon and just feel, just check it or a knife or, let me get a spoon. But honestly, they shouldn't. And it's really up to you how crunchy you want it or how soft. Now, you know, it's gonna be runny because you're supposed to let it cool off but you want to make sure the bottom is cooked and see that's, that's cooked. And I, I didn't want it too hard, but that's cooked. I'm not, well, we have to let it cool off, but I might not let it cool off all the way for a taste test. I might just take a picture of the pan with a, I uh, could eat it with ice cream, but that's too much sugar, but Anyway, I had to move you over here because I'm cooking a chicken breast for my dog. We are trying uh, different foods for him because uh, to see if he starts itching a little bit less. And yes, we give him flea medicine and all that. He has been uh, sleeping a lot. He's got a little infection in his eyes. So, uh, and he's hard, he's so hard to put the medicine in. He's kind of mean. Uh, he'll bite you sometimes. <laughs> Anyway, I'll show you what, what he looks like in a second. I'm gonna take these off of the, the hot pan and I need some better oven mitts. I'm gonna put it on the cooling rack. So they cool off faster. This is peanut and I love the size of the pillow face too. And they found the little peanut. He can be nice, but he can be mean. Give him a kiss. <laughs> anyway. He's our little, he's our little shit too. Shit too. And he's really a little S H I T. <laughs> because I, I like it hot and uh, I don't have the patience to wait. But here's a little close up to the crust. It's good. I tried it. And the secret is to have a good peanut butter and a really good jam. But it, it is so good warm. It tastes like, it tastes like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It tastes like, I don't know. Well, mm. But like, I don't, it tastes, I'm not good. Kind of like a oatmeal, sense. peanut butter, sandwich cookie or something. Yeah. Or cobbler, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it's really, really good. So hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you have to try these. It's simple, but it's really, really good. And I want to thank Ella for being on camera with me. I'm kind of shy today. And Peanut. Anyway, hopefully, I'm, I'm feeling good now, so I'm trying to get more videos out. 
I'll just, you know, uh, do that. So, anyway, please subscribe if you like really good cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and a person that talks a lot. And you have a good day or night, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching, and we love you guys. Bye.